And like the uh, pastor said, we'll be doing a series this month on outrageous generosity. And I'm excited to uh, be able to teach, open up the series today and this month. Uh, CareNet is an awesome ministry, like uh, that was saying. They, they care for those who are in need. They care for women who are, are pregnant and need, um, need some assistance. And they do a great job. One of the, one of the stats that I was... I was shocked to hear. So I was thinking, and we went in and they gave us a little tour of the complex and they were telling us about these ladies that come in for the state of Wisconsin. They were one of the one of the states that do require if you're going to be getting an abortion that you you have to have an ultrasound before you have to have an ultrasound and there's another two other requirements that our state has. And so they provide their free clinic for ladies to come in with their ultrasound. Uh, but they have their their whole mindset is, hey, this is a ministry, this is an opportunity for us to share Jesus with these ladies. And so they have found, even if the ladies come in, um, and they provide free health care for them, um, health services. And so um, he says that about 30% of the women that come in, they're not even thinking about abortion. They're just there because they need the assistance, they need the free health care, so they assist them. And it's like, it's really great. They said about 60% of them are... are ladies that are either thinking about abortion or they're not sure if they want to keep the baby or if they're not going to keep the baby. And so they're just talking about how they, they share Jesus with them, they love on them, they even have a home there that we've talked about where they, they let the ladies stay during their pregnancy there at the home and while they're there, they're educating them, they're training them about parenting, they're helping with their, uh, whoever the, the father of the baby might be, um, and then they're, they're also training them, they have job training and things like that to help them get back on their feet. Um, after the baby's born, or, or even help them get jobs and get education. So that's really great. And they're talking about that 60% of the ladies that come in, they're not sure if they want to keep the baby, if they're not going to keep the baby. And they said, out of that 60%, 85% of those ladies choose life over abortion. And uh, so it's just like, really amazing what they're doing. And they have pictures of all the different babies on the wall. It's really neat. Hopefully they'll bring some of those pictures when they come. Uh, but we're excited to kind of partner with the heart of God and being outrageous givers. Um, so this this morning, that's what we're going to talk about, is the heart of God and giving. Why, why do we give? Why is this something in the Old Testament? There's even requirements on giving and things of that nature. So let's, uh, let's dig in. We're going to open with 2 Corinthians chapter 8. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul is talking to the, the Corinthian church, and he's, he's a, he, I love Paul's letters. A, a, a lot of the letters, they're, they're super encouraging. He's like challenging the different churches to grow or in a different area that they're maybe lacking in. Um, I, like, I like challenges. I don't know, a little bit of competitive nature. So I'm like, yeah, like I'm, when I'm reading Paul, I really enjoy how he writes. So in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he's talking about this collection that the churches are taking um, and here are the words that he speaks to them in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We're going to read 1 through 7 this morning. It says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they extended our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urge Titus, just as we had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. They say, okay, these other church, the Macedonian church, they're given outrageously, and we we encourage your leader, Titus, to do the same, that you guys to take part in this. So verse 7 says, But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in, lo in love, we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. So I love um, Paul's words here, because like, I can say, he's, all, he's, he's like really encouraging and also challenging. So I love the fact that here in this verse 7, he says that you have excelled in a lot of things, in speech and knowledge, in complete earnesty and love. Uh, you guys are a great church. And so I was thinking about 
Kappa City Church and the great church that we have, that we love each other, we're excelling in the Word, we're meeting together, and we've even, we've even been excelling in giving. It's been ridiculous to see what God has been doing in the church, even for us to be able to you know, put our wall up, you know, and, and uh, be able to do some of the different sound things. I don't know if you guys went into the upstairs restroom today, but we have new pictures in there too. I was like, sweet. Um, but there's things that we're, we're doing as a body that we're growing. When we have visitors, they come and they're like, man, I, I remember Alan said one time, he was like, man, we're, we're like family. We are excelling in, a, in all sorts of different areas and becoming more like God in our everyday life. And this is an exciting part. And, and Paul here, and just and us this week or this month, we want to encourage him. Let's also excel in the generous giving uh, to reflect the heart of God and who he is in our lives. Um, so, like I mentioned, uh, there was in the Old Testament, God initiated some time, some required giving. And I don't know about you, but around this time of year, it's usually like the worst time of year for me. You know, it's tax season. It's like, anybody like tax season? Anybody get excited? Or no, all the accountants, right? No. <laughs> but but it's, it's one of those times I'm like, every month, you know, for me as a, as a missionary, self-employed, so I have to put away like 17% of my income and I like put it in a savings account, and then this time of year, I to, you know, actually three times, four times a year, I you know, give it to the IRS, here you go, there's my, there's my money, and I said, yeah. There's no joy in giving <laughs> any, I mean, I, there's no joy in giving tax. I just, like, you know, I just don't, I don't see that. It's more like, okay, I have to do this. But, you know, I do give my taxes because I, it's a, for me, it's a value statement. It's like, I value that, hey, I have a government that takes care of me. I live in this land. There's people that rule over me. Okay, so uh, there's still a, okay, it's, it's a value to me that I, I love my government. Uh, you know, that I, they do benefit. I can benefit that. So I'll pay my taxes. But in the Old Testament, God established these three times. And so we're going to look at those um, here. Because in each one of these times that he, in uh, the Old Testament law gave, I believe that they state, they give a value statement of God's heart. And so when we're talking about giving and we're saying, oh, we want to be generous givers, the important thing is to start with, hey, who, who, why did God do this? What is this, trying, why is God initiating these things and what is he trying to say by the way that um, he made these times? So each one of them, uh, each one of these, I believe, represent the value of God's heart. And if we want to be generous givers, we want to, we want to give things away, we want to be able to align ourselves with these uh, these areas of God's heart that we can reflect his heart to those who are around us. So the, um, the three ties that, that he initiated, um, we can find these in Leviticus chapter 27, if you take notes, or, and you can write down Numbers 18. But the first one that he, he, he had was a tie to the priest. So it was, it was, this was maybe you have heard of the first, the first fruits, but the ties, the ties to the priest, so they would take the money that they had, a tenth of what they had, and they would bring it to the, to the priest. And this was dedi this was dedicated to the life of, of, because the priests had dedicated their life to the service of God. So it was taken care of them. They said, um, and if we look at the different tribes of Israel, the priests, the Levites, or ones, they didn't have an inheritance in the land. So they had all the other ones they had an inheritance, and the priests didn't. So the people actually said, hey, you know what, we're gonna take, we're gonna take care of the priests. And this was really interesting that God would say, hey, first take care of those who are feeding you. I think it places a value on the word, the preaching of the word. If you're at Capital City Church, your tithe and offering, of course, they help us uh, have to pay some of the salaries, Pastor and I. And then we also, we support missionaries. And this month we're going to hear from a missionary, Levi and Morgan, you guys met them, they're doing Pi Alpha here. And we're, going to, we're going to hear from them in, in two weeks. But we give to missions. And because why? Because we value the preaching of the word. We value the fact that there's ministers, um, the Riles, they're in Belgium. And we value the fact that they're there. They're reaching people for Jesus. They're, they're preaching the gospel. They're, they're reaching people we can never talk to. So we're placing a high value on the preaching of the word. Just as God does. He, he honors those who are in ministry. We give to the church to take care of the ministers. Because, hey, they, they're preaching the word. That's a, that's a high value on God's heart. The second, uh, second um, tie that God implemented was also in, in Deuteronomy chapter 14. And this was the tie of the grain and the field and everything. And those offerings, those tithes, they went towards the festivals. I was like, cool, God feasted, God celebrated. That was, that was, God was like all about celebrating. But what is this, what is that, um, 
that, what was that value that, that God was putting on it? He was showing the value of worship. I think hey, these are going to be God people. This is going to be people that that was the image of God. And they're going to they're going to tie, they're going to give to the festivities of worshiping God. I'm like yes. Yeah. So that's why I get excited when hey we can get little TVs up here because it's going to help us in our in, in have an environment of worship. It's, it's excited when we can give and be able to put on a big Thanksgiving dinner like we've done before, things of that nature. It's, it's to show the people, it's to show the people the character of God, that we're, we're a fest of celebratory people, because God is a God who loves and is worship. And the third one that he implemented, this is actually, they call it like a, a third tithe. And some people say whether, okay, maybe I was looking at scholars and like, okay, why was this a third tithe? Let's mean, you know, they had to give like 30% of their income, or was it a third of a tithe, so it was like 3% of a tithe or something like that. And I was trying to add it up, being all, you know, accounted like, I was like, okay, what does this mean? 24%? This is crazy, right? But the, but, the, but he said there's a third tithe, and that was introduced um, in Deuteronomy also. And it says, this is for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. So I love this value statement of God, with, that he would implement he would implement a giving aspect that would take care of those who are in need. And I think that, that it speaks hugely to what God has. So why would, he, why would he implement these things? Or do we have to give just because uh, there was an implementation of, of tithing in the, in the Old Testament? Well, you know, Abraham actually, he gave a tithe to God even before the law was written. Did you guys know that? He went to the priest. And he said, hey, I'm going to give you 10% of all the spoils of the, the um, war that they just, the, the battle that they had just won. This was, this was before there was any kind of requirement on him. It was just an offering to God, a thanks to God. And so I think as we, as we look at this outrageous generosity, I think <coughs> giving, it gives us an opportunity to share the values of God with those who are around us. If we take part in what God's heart is. But God's heart is always to help those, well, I think, I put it this way, help those who are the underdogs, to, to protect the weak. When he was implementing any of his laws, it was always a protection for the weak. When he talked about giving, it's always the care for the weak. It's always the care for those who lack. And so we then get to partake in this. We get to share this in part of our life. We talk about if we want all of our life to submit to the Lordship of Jesus, then we're going to be people that are going to give outrageously, not because um, we, we're going to earn something, we're going to get some kind of credit, not because it's going to be paid back to us, because, hey, we, we see that God's heart is, and He cares for the Word being preached. He cares that we have a festival, a, a celebration, a, a worship environment. He, he cares for the poor. That's, that's His heart. And we, through our giving, get to take part in that. So, the, the first point today is outrageous giving allows us to share God's heart. Let's look at Mark chapter 12, verse 41 and 44. The story of Jesus, and he's, uh, he's in the temple. I'm going to read this real quick. And he's observing people's offerings. Mark chapter 12, verse 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12, 41 through 44. It says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has been put that has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Now, like I said, I, uh, at the beginning, I, I'm, I'm a competitive in nature. I love, 
I love challenges. I like going after things. And so, you know, when I when I'm thinking about giving, sometimes I have some. Uh, sometimes when I, I get to know some other people, and maybe I know giving habits. When we're at Chi Alpha down at Purdue, you know, I would know, hey, this offering was happening, and and we would kind of chat, hey, what are we going to give to this? And you know, I heard somebody else giving this amount. And I was like, you know, hey, I could give, I could give that amount. And 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 I was looking at this. I was like, it's. When I was looking at this past week, you know, I was reminded of my like my, my nature to out give people. And I was like, I could like give like huge amounts, or as my you know income grew a little bit, I was like, oh cool, I could give this amount. But when we're talking about giving, Jesus was sitting here watching all these people, he's watching the different people giving giving their amounts. And it was really interesting to me that I noticed that the that that obedience is not only like obedience isn't just what wins the prize. I was thinking about that. I was like, obedience is just what wins the prize. Isn't just that I, I gave the money or I give the greatest amount that, that won the prize in this moment. I was like, Jesus, how can that be? I mean, like, isn't it good that those people that had much, they gave a ton? I was like, of course. Okay, there's there's a lot that you can that you can that you can do. If we if you know, if I only have a dollar today, then you know, I'm only eating at McDonald's, right? So if I had more, then there's there's more I could do. There is that, that aspect of it. But Jesus said, no, it goes beyond just the amount that you give. It goes beyond just winning the award of the best giver. It goes with the heart. And it's like, he sees this widow and he, she gives she gives just a little bit, two coins, two copper coins. And he said, wow, that, that's the type of giver that is awesome. And I'm like, what? Jesus, how could you say that? I mean, like, come on, we know bigger is better, right? We're American. Like, bigger is better, right? No, but it said the, the heart of this woman, she was like, she gave up everything. I said, wow, okay, so what is this, what is this value statement? If, if we're talking about outrageous giving shares the heart of God, it's not just the amount that we're giving, but it's the heart in which we give these things. Because our heart speaks value to what we're doing. It's not just the obedient act of giving, but it's the heart behind it. And this woman said, man, I'm going to give, I'm going to give it all. The acts, the, and acts, the early church, they give this, they give this crazy insight into uh, what it means to live a life of outrageous generosity. And acts, it makes a statement that there was, uh, there was no one that lacked, there was no one lacked anything. They're so into this generous heart that they're like, oh man, I understand the value that God puts on other people having what they need. I understand the value that the church has in, in, in making sure the priests are taken care of and, and is a festival to have. And, and they said, man, even each other, we, there's nobody that lacked me but because they were like, hey, I'll, I'll sell my house and give it all. And there's this one couple, you guys may know the story in Acts chapter 5, that they decided, hey, we're going we're gonna to join in this generous giving. We want to we want a part of this uh, situation. And so Ananias and Sapphira, you, go, you know that name? <laughs> I was just mentioning it, and I'm like, oh man. It's just like, oh. Ananias and Fire in Acts chapter 5. It's like they, they could have ate for effort, maybe. I don't know. But they, they sell their property, right? And they're going to take their offering and they're going to go bring it to the, to the priest, right? But I, I, I could imagine, you know, uh, well, okay, so if I sell my home right now, I probably would be in debt more than. Then get some money, but you know if we if we sell get a if you sell sell your property you, you own the property you get a nice a nice shiny penny you know when you we sell, sell your property and so the Ananias and Sapphira they're like okay we're gonna go lay this before the priest's feet so they take it before them and we know there's an issue of their heart that comes out so anybody you know this might. It's my birthday. Actually, Ashley's birthday was yesterday. That was pretty sweet. Lewis's birthday was Friday. We have like birthday weekend. That's pretty awesome, right? But if somebody were to give you a gift, what is, what is required when somebody gives you a gift? So if I were to, I, I didn't bring a gift up here. I can't really give away my phone. That would be kind of hard. I can give you your phone. Yeah. But if I, but if I, I want to give a gift to somebody, right? What, what does it require me to do when, I give, when I'm giving a gift? If I give the gifts to Rachel, what requires it? What does it require me to do? <laughs> right? Let go. Let go. Let it go. Where's Bella? No. <laughs> right? So if I if I if we're going to give a gift away, it requires me to let go of what I have, right? 
The Ananias and Sapphira, this is the issue with their heart was, hey, I, I sold this property, I got a, I got a, they got a pretty penny for it, and they said, you know what, I want to appear like I'm going to get a generosity award to this day, I, but you know what, I really, I really want to keep some for myself. And I don't think in this story, I don't think the keeping it of them, for themselves was the issue right. in, this, in this story. So I don't think it's like negative that, hey, that we have a savings account and we put some money away every, every week in the savings account. I, we're going to talk about budgeting and fun stuff next week. But the the point of, of the giving part was they, they kept it for themselves and they wanted to appear as if they had given everything. Uh, no, it's not about appearance. And they actually both got struck dead. I haven't seen that happen in modern days, so I think we're safe. But um, but it's a serious thing when, hey, when we're giving, that our heart be right. That we're gonna, if we're gonna give to God, if we're gonna, be, if we're gonna partake, partake of this generosity, if we're gonna partake of this value that God places on things, hey, we're gonna have to let go of what we got in order to give to God. Because our second point is that our giving demonstrates our trust in God. Our generous giving demonstrates our great trust in God. The second time. I almost went back to the beginning of my notes. Maybe I should number these. It'd be better. So our, our, our righteous giving uh, demonstrates our trust in God. But before we head that way, our righteous giving is not only, we don't all, only want to excel, like Paul was saying, excel in the giving. We don't only want to excel in our offerings to the Lord, but also that we live a life of outrageous generosity. So in our life, we can also display this value that God has for, the, for those who are in, in ministry, for, for the celebration of worship, and for the poor. You know, Rachel and I have had some sweet opportunity to, to share in this. We're like, we used to go at, in uh, West Lafayette to this uh, ice cream shop called Silver Dipper. They basically have um, chocolate, chocolate shop ice cream down in West Lafayette, so it's really great. The only bonus was, I, I still have to talk to the owner up here, they have, um, they had, uh, what do they call it, mini scoops. So you can get three little mini scoops, so it would be the size of one huge scoop, and you can get three different flavors. I love that, I like so much food. Anyway, but we would visit this, sorry, we have an ice cream addiction, right? So we go, <laughs> we go to this, like, because we get three mini scoops for like two bucks, right? It's like super cheap. It was like way better than getting a whole scoop and you get multiple flavors. So anyway, we'd go to this store all the time and we'd get to know Claire. Claire was the lady that always helped us dip our ice cream. And so we got to know her store and talking to her and things of that nature. And, and one of the times we were in there just chat, chatting it up and she was telling us about, um, about she was about to move, she didn't have income, she just broke up. You know, like, you know, one of those moments again, it was tough moments. And when we turned out, when we, we walked out of the the store, and it was like immediately we both turned to each other. Like our heart went out. Our heart, same. I think the same heart that God looks at when He sees people in tough situation, and He's like, He, he has to do something. Like God, like, like I don't think God just sits back and like laughs at us anymore. He's like, He's actively involved in our lives, and He's like, He He whispers to Rachel and I individually. He's like, You guys got to do something. You guys have an opportunity to do something and to bless this this lady, Claire. So we. We get to the car, basically, and we're like, we both turn to turn to each other, you know, you give your wife that look, and you're like, you know, what you're thinking, you know, like, we're like, yeah, we need to do something, right? We're like, yeah, we, I mean, like, this is totally a God moment for us to just be generous to the person. So the Silver Dipper store is here, and then um, Chase Bank, or Bank, was like, uh, just uh, right across the parking lot. So we're like, okay, we'll go over to Chase Bank, typed in a number in the, in the ATM, got out some cash, put it in a little card, and said, hey, we, 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 uh, we just hear your story. We just want to let you know that, that God loves you today. And he, he's here in the prayers to pray. She would even mention, you know, yeah, I've been praying. I just, nothing seems to be working out, you know. And God knows he, he, he's here in your prayers. And he sent us today just to, to bless you. So we go back to the store. like, you know, you guys want more ice cream? I'm like, no, we're good. We, we didn't have it. And, and uh, we gave her a little card and had, had a generous amount of money in it. And um, so she takes it and kind of like, is it, oh, is this for me or whatever? And yeah, and she reads it and uh, she's like, no, like, no, no, no. Like it just repeated that, I don't know how many times, right? And then goes into the back, you know, and she's, uh, and, and eventually comes out and like gives Rachel and I, 
and she then tells us the real story of what's been going on and the amount of rent that she owes and that God uh, that God has spoken to us. Like it's really neat. Sometimes within a married couple, maybe as you're single, maybe you don't have the same uh, dynamic, but it's kind of fun. Uh, Rachel and I will like pray. We'll say, okay, God, how much? Like we know we. You're telling us to give, how much you want to give, and I'll, I'll say a number, and Rachel will say the exact same number, and we're like, okay, God, that must be what you want. And, you know, this particular instance, it was outrageous. Like, it was like, no, you shouldn't give this amount. Like, this is outrageous. It's stupid. You know, like, it, like and we were no, we know God was going to do this. And so we went ahead and gave. And we got to talk to her afterwards, share the love of God with her, pray with her, have a gospel moment. But I believe these moments like this, these moments of generosity, they share, they do, they share the, the heart of God towards people. That he cares for our needs. And it, with the amount that we, the, the, give, the part of the money we have that God gives us these opportunities to bless people, it shares his, his heart with them. And so she was floored that God would send two people getting ice cream to bless her. So in not only in our giving in church, but in our everyday life, we have an opportunity to be outrageous givers, and it shares the heart of God. And God takes care of us. The second point is that outrageous giving shows our trust in God. What was really interesting for me was that in these Old Testament tithing opportunities, it was often called the first fruits. So it was when they were, when they were their sheep or their their flock, whatever they had, they gave they gave birth. And they said, okay, they would reserve the first the first born would be for the offering. Whether it was the fruit on the trees, their first harvest that they had, it was all reserved. Okay, they're going to give that. And I was like, okay, God, what? I mean, isn't it good? Like, okay, so we know, right? Pay ourselves. We learn those those good budgeting budgeting things, and of course, we, we should pay ourselves. And and I, I just got a, a ride this week. I was in I actually took. Uber instead of driving somebody, but a, a gentleman who was from Montana, he was a retired guy, uh, he, he, he goes, I was born in Miami, my dream was to be a cowboy, I went and lived the dream of being a cowboy out in Montana, and he retired about 10 years ago, and uh, he, he now he's now Ubering, and he's like, I just do it for fun, and he says, you know what, I always tell, I always tell all my young riders, whenever I get a young rider, go ahead and pay yourself now so that in your golden years you can have fun. He's like, this truck, he, we're in a 3,500, uh, uh, a Ram, Dodge Ram, 3,500, and they're like huge trucks, right? It's like, I paid with this for cash, you know? He was like, yeah, like I paid myself first. So I know there's, there is there is a good responsibility to pay, to pay ourselves first, but, but to set aside first God's money, to give to Him, to, to have that money set aside, to be generous. <laughs> Next week we're talking about having margin. God set up margin in our lives so that we can be able to give, to be able to be moved by his heart, to share his value with others. So there's an outrageous giving that shows our trust in God. The, the, the first fruits of giving, they gave the first fruits because they were saying to God, hey, I'm giving this to you, I'm going to trust you that the rest of the month, the rest of the year, I, I'm going to be taken care of. It speaks our trust in God. It was crazy, even uh, giving the opportunity, Rachel and I had, it was another time where we're um, at a restaurant and a waiter, you know, you know, you know how much waitress and me, they think like way below minimum wage because they are dependent on tips, right? So we have this another opportunity where we're we're at a we're at a restaurant and I got just like, hey, go ahead and give this. And we're like, yeah, another instance where we're not making a ton of money, but we said, okay, we'll go ahead and give. And it was amazing that double the amount that we gave came in more for our missions giving. If you don't know, people like give to us on a monthly basis to help us do ministry. So we gave this crazy crazy amount to the waiter, and then the next month, twice that much came in more than the, the month before. And we're like, okay, God, you're awesome. You're going to take care of us. Our giving, our, our the way we're outrageously generous, is because we trust in God, because he's going to come through. Luke chapter 12 is, a, is another instance where, where Jesus is um, confronting Challenging this heart issue in giving. Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 21. It's this story, this parable Jesus tells. And he, he tells stories in order to get a point across of a, my title puts in here, the parable of the rich fool. I'm like, oh man. 
Jesus hate money? No, I, I, let's read this story because there's a, there's a, there's a point, there's a point Jesus is getting at the heart of the person. It's not the money that's the issue, it's the heart behind this. He says uh, in 14, Jesus replied, man who appointed me a judge or arbitrary between you. Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possession. It's not about abundance of possessions. Life is not about abundance of possessions. Our inheritance is not in this world. Our inheritance is in heaven. And it's far of more abundance, far more great than we can ever imagine. Life on earth is not about abundance of possession. Verse 16. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. Then, then who will get what you prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. This is like the hardest thing I was thinking about. Andrew, you're going to talk about giving at church. And you're going, to, you're going to confront some things in our American dream world. Like, I, Rachel, you know, like, we, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. Stop using Rachel and many examples, but we, if we're honest, we love to have our things put together. It's a, it's a good thing when we, when we can get the next best car, when we can get the next biggest house, when we can take care of ourselves. And I don't think God is neglecting that, but I think what it is, is we're thinking about ourselves before the other. He said, you got all this surplus of grain, what are you going to do with it? Just keep it for yourself? Or are you going to take an opportunity to bless others with what you have? Because it reflects the heart of God. Try, he basically telling the rich, foolish man, trust me. Trust me with, the, with, with what's going on in your life. Trust me that, hey, that your car is going to go an extra mile. And trust me that your, your clothes are going to be taken care of. I mean, do you, you guys remember the story of the, the Israelites in the book of Exodus? And they're going through in the desert and their clothes don't even wear out? I'm like, supernatural provision of God. Our outrageous generosity... It's a sign of our trust in God that He's going to take care of us. And I'm telling you, He does. Like if, if, and if you, if you haven't experienced it, maybe yesterday we were taking some parenting classes and we are learning about um, how children in neglected situations, once they get adopted, they have to relearn how to trust. Like they've, never, they've never been in a real loving, caring situation. Maybe they just have caretakers, they have shifts, you know, and everything. Is that when you adopt a child that's a little older, they have, have they maybe have been in orphanage for a while or been in an institutional kind of uh, living situation, they, they, they have to learn how to trust. And so they go through this trust cycle where you need to learn how, uh, when they express their need, that they know that, hey, you're going to be the one that actually cares for them and, and parents them and, and loves them, right? And it's this trust thing, and they feel trust, and they, they learn how to do it. And so I'm, I'm going to and maybe even challenge you this morning, the challenge for us this morning is maybe we need to grow in our trust cycle with God. That, hey, you, you've lived with just enough or whatever, and, and God's asking you, hey, be generous with it and trust me that I want to take care of you. Amen. And I, I promise you that as we, if your heart is right before God and you say, God, I, I'm just going to give generously because I know that I, it shares the, the, the value of your heart with others, then I'm just going to share to him, and I promise you he's going to come through on the other side. He, if you trust him with what, what you have, I promise you he's going to take care of you. It's in his word over and over again. Release your heart to him. Trust him in the, in the, in, in the physical, natural thing. Because I believe that the most practical, physical way that we can grow our trust in God is through practicing outrageous generosity. Just practice it. I want to practice this because I'm, I just want to increase my trust. I'm going to increase. It's a physical, practical way that we can increase our trust in God. I give you. So let's look here. Paul, again, we're going to turn back. We started in 2 Corinthians. We're going to turn back to 2 Corinthians. 
Paul continues his conversation about giving. And I, I love it because it so reflects Jesus. Everything Jesus said about, about money issues wrapped up in this one conversation. It's about the heart. It's like, hey, it's not how much you give. It, I mean, the two, two copper pennies the lady gave compared to the large amount, not about, it's the heart of what you give. That you get, hey, I, want to, I want to participate in this generosity because I want to share the heart of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Generosity and courage is a little title of my NIV Bible gave it. But it's so real. Gen uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9, starting in verse 6, says this. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give you Give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is the thing, like, in tax season comes and I have to do those taxes, there's no joy or cheerfulness <laughs> in giving. It's like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be taken from me and I'm happy because this speaks a good value statement that, hey, the government is good, it's going to take care of me, I'm in the law, the land of the law, and I have to obey the laws, and, you know, okay, I, I'll, I'll speak that. But in giving to the Lord, and giving our tithes and offerings here at the church, and, and taking part of caring for the poor, and, and taking part of, of, of our worship and festivals, it allows us this opportunity to say that I want to be generous just like the Father just I want to share in the values that He's given me. I'm going to demonstrate my trust in God to provide all my needs. Verse 8. God is able to bless us abundantly. Verse 12 says this, The service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service which you have provided and proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel and for your generosity in sharing with them with everything, everyone else. So our, why do we give? What do we give? We give because it it expresses the heart of God and what He cares for, right? And secondly, it results in the praise of God. It's exciting when it's given to Claire or given given situation. It's exciting when we can give on a monthly basis to care and we hear the story. It results in the praise of God. Our generous living, our generosity, wow, people get excited about who God is because they see God in what we give. I think this month is, is going to be uh, exciting if we can take this journey together because I, I believe we're going to grow in, in our trust in God together as a whole body. I think we are a people. We're, we're excelling in these areas already. Now we can say, wow, I want to outrageous generosity. What would it look like if we would be a people that were outrageous givers just like God, our Heavenly Father, was to us? It's going to increase our trust in Him. No matter what's coming away, we're gonna we're gonna know he's got our back. He's gonna provide for us. It's gonna it's gonna encourage the community around us to praise God when we partner with a ministry like CareNet and say, hey, CareNet, we're gonna get behind you. Not only just in, in in our prayers, not just in hey, we'll go over there and do something, but hey, we're gonna get behind you in in our finances because you know what? We we're gonna see them praise God because people care for them. It demonstrates the care of God in their life. I, I get excited about that. They get excited about the opportunity. We're talking with them, and they're talking about how um, they, they they challenge some churches on Mother's Day to do a, um, a baby shower for the for the ladies that are there. So every Mother's Day, some churches they'll say, "Hey, everybody, this Sunday we're going to bring tons of whatever baby supplies, diapers, and bottles, and newborn clothes, and things of that nature, and we're going to do a baby shower for all the mothers that are there." I mean. What kind of value does that speak to them? That not only God cares, we care for you. 
It's through our giving that we can express these things. This morning, I want to I close in, in a prayer because I believe some, sometimes these things, like that rich, the, 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 the rich man, you know, who had that, it, it goes to like the core of who we are. Sometimes it touches really personal things, right? Like, oh, what do you mean? I can't put some offerings away for myself or I can't, you know, say, no, I, I believe God wants us to take care of ourselves. But he says, hey, your outrageous giving <clears throat> demonstrates my heart. I care for those who are weak. The ones that the, he established that for the priests who had no inheritance, he established it for the worship so that they could celebrate together, and then he established it for the poor because he, he cares for those who have lack. So in our outrageous giving, we have the same opportunity. Share God's heart that these individuals they have value. And we also make a point that within our outrageous giving, that we trust God. That he's going to provide our needs as we get back to him. Right? So let's pray this morning as we as we close. Father, we we uh, today are, are humble. We're encouraged by your word that you that you would even implement things not just uh, because you want to make rules and, and laws, but that it. That it shows your heart that you care, you value those who are in need. And so, Father, I pray that each one of us today, that that just as Paul wrote, that we would excel in the grace of giving. That we would we would take take this understanding that you are a God who is generous to us, and we we return it back. We we act generous in our giving, so that the world around us are blessed and they praise you. What an opportunity we have to increase your praise. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give us grace to trust you. That when you speak to give this or, or, or give that, Father, that we would demonstrate our trust in you. That you would care, that you're going to care for us. That you're going to supply all our needs. That we're going to have no lack. Father, we just say in our giving, we trust you. Yes. Father, may that be our heart, just like the, the widow who gave the two copper coins. Father, may it be our heart that we, we're saying, and our giving, we're just demonstrating. God, we trust you. We trust you. You're going to care. You're going to take care of us. Father, uh, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that, that you just eliminate all fear when it comes to giving. Because you're a good father who cares for us. We, we know that. Help us to believe that. That we can partner in caring for those around us, God. We pray, God, that, that we would even excel like the early church did. That there was, there was nobody that lacked anything, God. Wow. Uh, I pray, God, that we would be people, God, that, that so outrageous give, God, that there would be no lack among us. And Lord, I pray that all this would be for your glory. Would be for your praise, that we would excel in giving for your praise. God, you've been so good to us. Father, I pray now, I pray a supernatural blessing on each one that are here today. Each individual, each family that's represented. Father, that they would receive your abundant blessing. Your abundant grace. Father, in their workplace, may they have favor. Father, in their finances, may they have favor with their... In, in everything, Father, may it be touched by you. Pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs>